This is part three of a series. A butcher demonstrates the correct way to process a deer from start to finish. In this video, we talk about aging venison and the difference between letting venison age and meat that's spoiled. So learn how to age and avoid spoiled meat in this video, and be sure to check out the whole playlist. Just like in cheese, just like when you're making wine, everything has to do with hardness first before it's ready. You know? yep. And then uh, if you let it go too long, not keep it in that, then it's gonna spoil. Okay. Which we don't. Which we so don't. good question for you, Jay. What's that, how do you, not you, I mean, you're a professional. How does a guy like me at home look at it hanging in the shed and say, still good, spoil? What's the best way to tell? Smell. Can't beat the smell. Can't beat the smell. So if you give it a smell and it still smells like... If you walk in there and it smells like a deer hanging there, yeah. you're okay. If you walk in there and it smells like roadkill or something that's a little bit off yeah. or of fish, yep. that fishy kind of stink, you know, and slime all over yeah. it, and you're going to have problems. Uh, if, in a controlled atmosphere, you'll have mold. Okay. So, and uh, I'll show you what that looks like before I even touch it. Yep. I'll, I'll show you exactly what I'm looking at. And this even happens with cattle, is the mold. Okay. You don't touch the beef until the mold starts growing. That's an indication to us that everything is working properly. The enzymes are doing their job. Okay. We do not cut as soon as we see the mold. We have to let the mold get a certain length. Oh, that's, okay. That's what I do. A lot of people can do whatever they want. I'll, I'll look for mold when it starts to become about an eighth of an inch, sixteenth to an eighth of an inch. Now we're getting there, and it's going to it's going to be ready within a day or two. Okay. Before that, I don't touch it. Got it. You know, and then after that, like I mean, dear, you know, I'll show you in a minute here. That mold is about an inch long, and that's perfectly fine. Wow. Because we don't touch the inside of the rib cage. Right. The hide's still on it, so once I pull that off, that thing is going to be just like a little beetle hanging there. Awesome. It's going to be a beautiful pink, and it looks like it was just, just killed. So what? Now, uh, this deer has been aging almost a month, and this is the mold that I'm looking for um, that, that I'd like to see for myself personally. Uh, it's probably about a half inch long. What we're going to do is all the stuff here we don't use anyway. Uh, this is why we leave the kidney fat on the fillets because it protects them from this from this mold. It's what we do uh, in this trade the old fashioned way. The, the new style of, of meat farming, they don't, they don't age their stuff anymore. Uh, the stuff in the store is not aged. The stuff in that cooler there that I think Austin has a couple shots of will age for two to three weeks before we cut it. And it will look Similar to that. Maybe not as heavy, but that's okay. But so it is, when you were dealing with that, do you have to wear anything? No. It, no, because what I do with this, I don't even touch it. I hit it off, knock it off the hose. Oh, okay. It's gone. Cool. So, I mean, and then we'll, but we don't use anything from in there anyway. Yeah. The uh, So the mold itself, if you did eat it, would be bad for you? No. You would, Oh, it wouldn't be. No, it's a harmless. It is harmless. It's harmless. I was, all right, I was like confused. The, this is like the mold on cheese. Okay, so the mold itself is harmless, right. but it's just you don't want to look at that. So, no, it's it's got a uh, you know a taste to it. Yeah, an aged taste that some people you know they'll call it nutty. Like okay. these cooks, got, oh, it's got a nutty flavor to it. It's not nutty. It's just old and it's, <laughs> it's mold. Uh, but uh, blue cheeses is the same, same mold. As, and that won't be blue cheese until you have the mold. Got and it. Some of those cheeses age for a long, yeah. long time before they're ready. So, you know, just because that looks awful doesn't mean it is awful. There's absolutely nothing wrong with this meat. Um, so just to show you, see how moldy and, you know, it looks terrible. Look at that. Wow. Can you see that? Yeah, we need a close up. That's beautiful. See that meat is just as red as it was the day it was killed. So just because you see that mold doesn't mean it's bad. If it smells and it's slimy and fishy kind of smelling, then, then you got issues. But other than that, this is exactly the mold that we're looking for on all the animals that we do. Um, Beef-wise, I mean, I don't mean, uh, we don't do it on pigs, we don't do it on sheep and stuff like that, but the beef, this is what we're looking for. When it reaches that point, we know that the process is now over. And that's where we want it to be, just like making wine or cheese or anything when it comes to a certain working point. And then that's what we're looking for. So this is perfectly edible. There's nothing wrong with it. 
and uh, hopefully that doesn't turn anybody off, you know, to, to trying this process out. So, difference in age between these two deer. Hang, How long it's been aging? Uh, sorry, this has been hanging since November 18th, so almost a month, and that deer was uh, December 2nd, so it's about two weeks. So in two weeks, hanging at the same temperature, that's what you get compared to what you showed us on that deer. Right. This is two weeks versus, say, we'll call it a month. Cool. Just a few days. So, and the texture and the flavor will be um, something that it, you'll never see. You won't even think it's venison, in, in my opinion. So, but like I said, I'll send you home with some of that stuff and you can try it yourself and uh, tell me what you think or tell everybody what you think. What about a guy, just recently I shot a nice big buck, I'm super excited, uh, but I wanted to age the meat a little bit longer. Right. So I quartered it, because I don't have a walk-in right. like this, I quartered it and I hung it in my in spare fridge. I put a fan on it for circulation, I put some baking soda in the bottom to absorb the drippings. Mm -hmm. But everything is just bone, it's already off the bone, it's smaller cuts. Is that, uh, in that circumstance, would I be also looking for mold, or because it's smaller cuts, is that not good? Well, you can age it that way, but you don't want it to mold up, because okay. now what you're going to be doing, you see, when, when the animal's whole, it's, what's exposed here is where the mold growth is going to be. Now, most of the right. time on cattle, we have a big fat, a heavy fat cover, so it's okay if it gets right. covered, because we, we have to trim, we it, off, trim it off. off. No one's going to take an inch of fat on their steak on the right So... We don't care if it gets there, but when you're doing animals like this, you yeah. do not want the mold on the meat. On the meat, the, the rib cage, like you said, yeah, it's fine. I, I, it's I already taken the rest bone off. This has already been exposed, so yes, I'm going to trim this off anyway. Okay. And in here, you can see just starting. Oh yeah! Look at that. You see that? Yep. Okay. Now it's not ready. It's just started. Got it. So if you have a cooler or something in the high 30s, 37 to 40 degrees, that mold is really good press. Okay. Don't want that. Got it. Because then one day it'll look like you never even skin the end. Oh, it'll be okay. hair everywhere. So that's why the cooler temperature of 34 to 36, where I keep mine, makes better. all the difference in the world. Even those couple of degrees Got it. makes a huge difference. So someone like me who doesn't have enough space to hang in like this, if you're just doing a few cuts in your fridge, right. maybe you could put a week or two, but you're not looking for mold because at that point you're exposing the meat. And yeah, everything's been broken down. Now you're going to run into a lot of spoilage yeah. bacteria instead of the mold. And again, best way to tell for spoilage even on a small scale like that is smell. Awesome. Give it a sniff. They, I, people say all the time, you know, humans for thousands of years have been trusting their nose to tell them, right. you know, is this still good? Mm -hmm. And it uh, usually tells us the right, we don't have to get all scientific. No, it smells no, good, it's good. No, it, yeah, that's what they did. And smell, there's certain smells for certain things. Got it. You know, when you smell that, that the hocks on the deer, it smells right. like the dough or the urine. It's yep. what it smells like. That's fine, because you know that's what it's supposed to smell like. Right. Um, you know, the meat has a smell itself. You know, yeah. the fat has a little so smell. The first stuff. time you kill a deer, you might smell and worry because right. you're not used right. to the smell. But Especially when you open up the, right. the field dresser. Oh, oh it man, stinks. It's gone. <laughs> that's normal. Right. You know, that's what they smell like. Yeah. So, but people will think that's bad. No. It's, no, it's a normal part of the, you know, the right. smell of an animal. That's why you take all that stuff away. Take it out, right. clean it, hang it yeah. in a couple of days. And I always do it maybe every day. You check in the morning, check in the evening. Always keep up. check. You check. I check my coolers twice a day. Twice a day. Even on here. Yeah. Because it could be that one time you don't check it. Yeah. And it starts. Everything's gone. All right. And like our cooler here, if the refrigeration quits on us, the fans still go. Yeah. Now I have three fans in there, and they generate a tremendous amount of heat. Uh -huh. So if you go from 34 degrees to 60, it just Real a couple fast. Of hours. And then you got process. So especially like overnight. Oh man. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel and continue to follow this playlist. We'll be adding future videos in this series. And if you wanna know what equipment Jay uses when processing a deer, be sure to click on the links below to see what he uses. If you like this video and others like it, be sure to shop through our Amazon link right here when shopping on Amazon. It helps us support this channel and helps us to keep producing these videos.